Hey guys, this is Naveen here. Welcome back to Naveen Automation Labs. A quick update from the Selectors Hub site. Selectors Hub 5.0 is available and uh, it's actually available with the Selectors Hub Pro version. Very soon it will be available with the community version also. I think by mid of August or by end of August for sure. But I really want to show you a couple of some important and amazing features of Selectors Hub. Earlier, what we used to have that we have to right click if you really want to inspect any element on the web page, click on inspect here, and then we have to go to elements. We have to inspect it here like this. So this is a typical Chrome DevTools inspector here. If I really want to open the selectors hub, and if you're already having the selectors hub in your uh, browser, for example, you can see selectors hub pro and the selectors hub, I'm already having it. So how you used to open, you have to open a little bit, drag it here and click on this arrow and then selectors hub or pro that you have to open it here and then you have to inspect and then you have to write your X path and CSS, everything here. But now you don't need to do with this thing because it's a kind of a pain because we have to do a lot of navigations. For example, right click on it, then go to inspect. Then you have to click on this arrow. Then you have to click on this selectors hub or selectors hub pro. And then you have to a little bit drag it over here like this. But at the same time, if I'm moving to some other application, then again, I have to do the exactly same thing again, right click and then go to inspect and then do the exactly same thing to open the selectors hub uh, pro from here like this or selectors hub from here. So now it's a uh, quite irritating work and then quite frustrating work because uh, every time for every page, for every application, for every uh, different apps, I have to open a fresh selectors hub now. We just download selectors a pro 5.0 version you can directly open it from here also see this i'm just going to open it directly from this here and it will open in the window here like this as a panel here you can say a left hand side panel and your application is exactly over here if you still don't want to show your selectors hub pro here see for example i'm just unpin it from here now the selectors Hub pro is not here there is one shortcut you can use it simple right Control shift s S means selector sub, or if you're using Mac machine, simple press command shift S and that's it. <clears throat> Again, you press command shift S, it will be deleted. It will be removed. Again, you press, it will be appeared once again. Now, the good thing is you can inspect anything now. So see, this is the inspect page. Inspect icon is available. And now you can inspect this and you will get your locators and everything available here. Okay. And then after that, the same thing, you can copy your locators and do it like this okay so let's try now i'll open noon.com see this selector sub is not getting disappeared now i don't need to open it again and again i just need to inspect this okay fine quickly inspect that copy this uh, locator or xpath or css or whatever you want to use it you can use it here for example if i really want to go to this particular page it's official website of selector sub for the practice page see it's not getting disappeared if i really want to go to some uh, other pages for example open a new tab and then i'll open my own application for example let's see this one and uh, when you open that it's not getting disappeared now you can just simple inspect the any element which is available on the page so this is amazingly great once your work is done you simple press Control shift s once again it will be disappeared you want to open it again you really perform some functionality here let's say i'm searching for macbook and now i really want to go to macbook pro then I really want to inspect this icon quickly. Then what should I do? Simple control shift S automatically. It will be shifted. It's not like it's, uh, it's overlapping my page. It's not like that. So my page will be shifted towards the left hand side. And this is coming actually at the right hand side over here. And then after that, you can just easily inspect anything from here. Once your work is done, you simple press control shift S and disappeared once again. So this feature is actually available with the pro version. Very soon it will be available with the community version also. But if you are already using pro version, you can start using this. This is selector serve 5.0 feature. Now, another thing is, for example, let's see if I go to the registration page. So some amazing things that they have given. See, if I'm creating, let's see one page class. Okay. So I'll do one thing. I'm going to create one. Let's see under this particular pages, I'm going to create a class. And uh, let's see, this is my registration page class that I'm going to create and click on finish. Then what I'll do here that if I'm really, if I really want to create a page locator of the registration page, what I do used to do that private by 
and let's see the first locator name is the first name that I'm writing. This is the uh, first name that I'm writing. It's actually a private and first name is equal to what by dot or whatever the locator. So for that, I have to inspect this once again and then I have to check what kind of element that we are having with this particular first name. So let's see, ID is also available. Name is also available here. So let's see, I pick the ID from here and then simple writing by dot ID and then I'm passing the ID value here. And now the first locator is ready. <clears throat> Same thing I have to do for other locators also like that. So it is very time taking process. Now, what if I give you directly the ID with one single click and that's it. So see what you just need to do. You just need to write simple, let's see for the last name, right click on it and then you simply go to selectors hub pro and then copy ID. If ID is available, you can capture that. If name is available, you can capture that. So here you can see input hyphen last name is available. You just simply copy this and then you can directly start writing over here. So you don't need to inspect. Let's see last name is equal to by dot ID. And now we are writing this one over here. Okay. So if you really want to use name, so you can use name also. So if ID and name is directly available, these two options also available now. If you don't want to use ID and name, you want to use some XPath or JS path. You can use a JS path also, relative XPath also. So just take this. And then if you don't want to use this one, you can use this one. And then instead of ID, you can write XPath here. See, we cannot expect that okay, it will generate by dot XPath syntax also, because what if tomorrow you are using the same locator for playwright or a Cypress, then in that case, the syntax will be changed, but the locator will remain same. The same XPath will work for playwright will work for Selenium, WebDriver, IO, or any other automation tool that you are using it. The value will remain same. The syntax that you have to write according to your automation tool. So this is also a nice feature. If, for example, let's see for this particular uh, continue button, right click on it and go to select as a pro. If the ID is available, see it says ID attribute is not available for the web element. For this particular element, name is also not available. So then in that case, I can just quickly copy the X path from here, value equal to continue. I can take this or if I really want to take the CSS selector also, that also I can take it from here. So this is also one click uh, operation, one click uh, suggestion is available and uh, it's very helpful. It will easy to write, make your speed uh, faster when you uh, writing the code. That's really great feature. So that also we can do it. Another good thing is that let's see if you're working with some shadow DOM elements or any iframes. <clears throat> so here you can see that this element is actually available inside a shadow DOM. So if I really want to know this element is available inside a shadow DOM or not, then in that case, again, I have to do a right click and go to inspect and I have to search inside a DOM. See, I'm going to inspect this and now it's available actually with the shadow DOM <clears throat> shadow root open state app two. Right. So in the DOM structure only, I have to check that it's available or not. Now with the selectors of pro with the 5.0 version, what you can do, open the selectors of pro from here. And then you simply start inspecting these elements. If this element is available inside a shadow DOM, it will give you a tooltip that this element is inside shadow DOM. Same thing. You can see this element cannot be inspected because it's available inside a shadow DOM with the close shadow DOM. Okay. And we know that if the shadow DOM is in the closed state, I cannot inspect that. For example, let's see if you right click on it and go to inspect. So let's inspect this from here. And here you can see the shadow root is closed here. So it means I cannot interact with this particular element with Selenium. So you don't need to go to, to check that shadow root is a close or open in the Chrome dev tools. You can directly just simple inspect this and then check it over here. So whenever you are, let's see, working in a new real time project, and the first time you get the application and then you have to do a POC. So first what we do, it's not like we immediately start writing the code in my clips or IntelliJ. First we check everything that, okay, yeah, all these, what is the property of these elements? What kind of elements that they have on the page? It's iframe shadow root or what ID is available or not and all those things. So we don't need to worry about it. For example, let's see if I go to the registration page, I have to automate this application. So it will be easy for me to check that. Okay, fine. I can inspect that. ID is available. If you don't want to open selectors of pro from here, you can just simply right click on it and check that. Okay. The developers that they have given the data ID or ID or not. So here you can see that. Okay. Yeah. ID is available. Name is also available like this. So it's pretty simple to handle. It will make your life easy and productivity 
high in that case. Now, if I really want to check for the, let's say I'll go to the flip card and then I really want to check that for the SVG element. So it will highlight those elements which are, you know, uh, available with some spatial tags like iframe or SVG elements or shadow DOM or something like this. So see, I'll open my selectors so pro once again and I open uh, this and inspect this search icon. See, it's written with, this is a SVG element. You can see that this is an SVG element, but this is not giving me any tool tip. Why? Because this is a normal element. So for each and every element, it will not show you. Okay. Because there is no need of showing that what kind of element it is, but here, if some special elements like SVG or something like this, see, this is cart is also SVG element. This uh, arrow icon is also SVG element. The search icon is also SVG element. Then in that case, it will definitely and open your selectors a pro and then start inspecting it. You don't need to go to your <coughs> dev tool or Chrome dev tools or anywhere. Just simply write your XPath here to validate that or inspect your XPath or locator here and get your XPath or CSS over here like that. And that's it. So I hope this feature is really cool. Start using it and uh, share it with others if you really like this feature. Thank you so much. That's all for this particular video.